Let's look at rational functions. Uh, what's an example of a rational function? Well, that's something like, say, f of x is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 7 over x to the fifth plus 1. Polynomial over a polynomial is a rational function. All right, this theorem says, let f of x be that. In other words, be a rational function and let a be any real number. Then what it goes on to say is, if q of a is not equal to zero, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. What in the world does that mean? Well, it's saying, what if you have a limit you're trying to calculate as x approaches some number, and if you were to sub it into each one of these functions, top and bottom, and the bottom does not equal to zero, the denominator is not equal to zero, then you could just evaluate that function at that number. I'm gonna do an example in a little bit, so don't worry about it if you don't understand all the way yet. All right, this says that if I try to evaluate the function but my denominator is equal to zero, and the numerator is not equal to zero, then the limit does not exist, again. If I try to evaluate this function at that number a whenever I'm taking a limit and the bottom's equal to zero and the top's not, limit does not exist. How about this? The case where p of x over q of x is a rational function and if you try to evaluate the limit at the top and the bottom, they're both equal to zero. Then what we try to do is we try to factor that function, divide out stuff, and take the limit. All right, let's look at these cases. An example here. Suppose I want to calculate this limit right here. So how do I calculate that limit? Let me try to zoom in a little bit here. All right, how do I calculate this limit? Well, it's a rational function, right? Polynomial over a polynomial. So what I need to do is I need to think, what happens if I were to evaluate this at zero? I'll have, what, 1 over negative 7? Well, my bottom's not equal to 0, so that's like condition 1. It says if my denominator's not equal to 0, then just evaluate it there. So I'm just going to evaluate this function at 0. 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 1 over 0 minus 7, and that's negative 1 seventh. That one was easy enough. How about b? What if I try to evaluate this rational function at 2? What if I try to sub in a 2 right there? My denominator is 0, but my numerator is not 0. That was like that second condition in that theorem. Denominator is 0, numerator is not 0, so we're going to put does not exist. This limit does not exist. So it's really knowing that statement that theorem that we just went over. You really gotta know that. It doesn't matter if you know it verbatim or not. Just memorize it. You can even put it in your own words. Just know how to use it. How about this one? The limit as x approaches three of this rational function. What happens if I try to evaluate this at three? I get nine, minus three is six, minus six is zero, so the top is like zero, right? How about the bottom? That'll give me zero as well, right? The third thing in that theorem said what? If they're both equal to zero, try to factor this thing. So I'm going to try to factor this. Limit as x approaches 3 of, let's factor the numerator. The denominator cannot be factored. Let's see, x and x will give me x squared. 3 and 2 will give me 6, and 3 needs to be negative. 2 needs to be positive. All right, now, what happens here? These divide out, right? So I'm going to say this is equal to the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 2. Well, what I have left here is just a polynomial. If I have a polynomial, remember we can sub in that value? So we can say that's 3 plus 2 and lose the limit at this point. 
and that's five.